Ja, varmt välkomna hit till det här premiärsamtalet inför premiären av Eugen Anjegin nu på lördag. Eh, Eugen Anjegin som ju vi har spelat i det här huset ända sedan 1903 faktiskt. Fast i lite olika uppsättningar då förstås. Det här kommer bli den sjätte uppsättningen som vi gör nu i och med den här premiären. Jag heter Katarina Aronsson och jag är dramaturg här i Operahuset och jag har med mig några gäster. Vi väntar också på dirigenten, vi får se om han dyker upp. Han förvirrat sig kanske i Operahuset. So I, I will switch to English now because we will, maybe we will talk both in Swedish and in English, I don't know. And I would like to say welcome to Vasily Barkatov, the director, and Kalmanus Fredriksson, who is singing the role of Eugene Anjegin. I think we can give them applause. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just first of all, perhaps a short introduction. Vasily, this is your first time as director in our house. Uh, you come from Russia, Moscow which is a very good beginning when you are directing a piece by Tchaikovsky. <laughs> uh, and you, you, were, you studied opera and directing mostly in Moscow. Uh, yes, and it's, uh, it's very funny because the previous uh, Eugene Anjegin was staged by one of my teachers, so it's some kind of inheritance. <laughs> because Dmitri Batman, who became a head of uh, opera directing cathedra in Russian Academy of Theatre Art when I, uh, when I was a student. And he did the, the previous beautiful performance here, and now me, which is yeah. really not nice yeah. circumstances. This, it feels very, very good to have sort of, what do you say? You come after Dima Bertman. Yeah, inheritance yeah. sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and Kalmanius, you sang in that production, actually. Yes, I did. Yes, and uh, I don't know if you, you need a presentation, but I will give some sort of presentation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have sang 30 roles here in this house. Yes, scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you... you you sing both classical roles as well as new pieces. You were singing in Medea, for instance, by mm -hmm. Donald Burtz. Yes. And you're also a lead singer. Uh, a lead singer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And in this case I am. Yeah, in, in many but ways. Also and also, of course, singing a lot with orchestras as well. Yes. And this year, you are getting the scholarship of Jussi Björling. The yes. prize, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then we are waiting for Evan Rogister. Well, we'll see if he will turn up. Uh, so, um, I, I think I shall start with you, uh, Vasily. Uh, we believe, we who, did, who, who, who are not from Russia, that, that Pushkin and Tchaikovsky, and especially this opera, Eugen Anjegen, is sort of part of your heritage. Uh, is that true? I mean, is, is this really something that almost everyone know, know about? You know, um, there's a big, we should say, that there's a big difference between uh, Tchaikovsky Onegin and the Pushkin uh, Onegin. It's the difference between the characters and between uh, uh, emotional parts and the main, uh, main idea. But if to start from Alexander Pushkin, you know, we have the, the famous literature and theater critics, Bilinsky, and he said the famous phrase that uh, uh, the Eugene Anegin is the encyclopedia of Russian life. So this, this roman itself, which is really uh, true. And uh, you know, it was, it was uh, performed and, and published every week in the very famous, uh, let's, say, let's say, fashion magazine in St. Petersburg. And all the society waited for the whole week or in some time for the next chapter of this story, some kind of the TV series, which uh, literature series. And then when uh, one famous actress and a friend of Tchaikovsky, uh, she uh, once uh, during one evening, Tchaikovsky said that I'm searching the new sujet for the opera to be inspired by something. And she said, you should write Onegin. He said, oh, no, never, it's so vulgar. No, I never, uh, no, <laughs> not me not. He was so, it was, it's written in some letters and, you know, and the people who, 
were there, they said that direction was completely you know, opposite, like, no, 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 never, no, I need it some, you know, I will not do this. And then uh, already he, uh, there, there is a letter to this lady the same evening, on the next day he, he wrote her that the, when I came back the same evening, I read through immediately Onegin, and it, it, uh, by night already started the first, uh, the first school n notes. Mm -hmm. So he was really inspired by this su suddenly. And uh, perhaps it's it, because of some um, personal things which were the, the, the same in this moment, but he did the really one uh, of the most uh, important uh, uh, scores in music dramaturgy for the whole world, uh, I think, opera and the Russian itself. Because to make it so detailed in psychological uh, lines of the men, women, and different personalities, and as I said, just to f finish this uh, speech about the difference that the, the characters are completely different in Tchaikovsky point of view. And Anegin is, uh, is not so uh, snobbish uh, person. He uh, is more like fragile and self-doubted, open person, maybe mm. too open. In, uh, uh, and he's not like this, some kind of this cold macho mm. man like in Pushkin. Uh, it, it's mostly maybe Lensky is that kind in, in Tchaikovsky way. So he gave the, the piece of his own personality and the heart to every, every character, Tchaikovsky. Yeah. And he made them more, uh, more human being, you know, more, more warmer than, than did Pushkin. Yeah. Uh, Karl Magnus, you have, yeah. you have sung this part twice now. Perhaps more, or no? No, no. No, this is the second time. Yes, yes. So we have really got to know <coughs> this man, Eshena Egen, haven't you? So, so what do you think about him? What, what kind of man is he? Well, he's, um, he's um, quite a strange man in one way, because this is the big opera about having a big regret. He really... He, he, um, he, he, I think he really fall in love with this Tatiana, but he's so scared of everything, and he's so scared about himself, and um, so he can't just embrace this love from her, and he is, he is more focused on him himself and, and uh, all his uh, surface, or how to say. And then he, he behaves very badly to his friend, and, and uh, and um, yeah, but then in the third act, he's really almost get crazy, I think, mm -hmm. when he really, really realized that he can't have her and she has already gone for a very long time ago and she is a totally different person. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Do you like him? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a. But I, I try always to do it like when I'm doing other parts where, when it's uh, some sort of. Uh, sick or, or not pleasant person to to uh, convince myself that uh, this person thinks that he's doing the right thing, and then it's very scary. It's like uh, it's like the Conte de Luna in Trovatore, if because if I do like he's really believing what he's doing is right, then it's, his sickness is even deeper. So this. And again, he's, if he's really believing in himself that, oh, I'm so very fantastic and I don't need her, and, and then, then, then the fall will be much harder in the, in the end, mm. I think. Yeah. And also that we are in a train station, which is very beautiful. Train stations, for me, are very much goodbye, farewell. And she's really, really leaving, not just have already leave him by being with someone else, or marry someone else, but also that he's, she's really traveling away, or Anjegin is traveling away. Mm. So it's very beautiful, I think. Uh, you, you have placed <coughs> the story, uh, Vasily, in, of course, in the countryside, because it, it, the first two acts uh, takes place in the countryside, but it's sort of uh, both in a kitchen uh, at home, uh, Filipiana's home, but also sort of a big 
big square will all the, the, the people uh, living in this village uh, appear in different yeah, situations. So, so how did you come? come up? The, the, there is a, um, one trick that uh, the set of the first part is the more symbolic and more, let's say, theatrical in the beautiful way. And the second uh, set of the third act is realistic. Um, and I think it because um, the first part is really a little bit more as, as um, it's it lost in the middle of nowhere, and it could be uh, a little bit not so realistic as as the world of Tatiana. It's not realistic, like her letter. It's just a number of uh, fantasies which will never uh, they will never come true and the same the set of the first act and the village is uh, actually it's uh, very important how um, how Tchaikovsky painted the society of of the first part it's very important because uh, it's this uh, this is the force this is the power who uh, which is pushing uh, Lensky and Anegin to the duel it's not the aggressiveness itself in, in these characters. It's this village society who are spying on them and moving them like in the chesses, turn by turn, to, to, to this fighting and, and murder. And it's written, uh, of course, in, 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 my, uh, in our production, it's a little bit maybe more horrible village people as Tchaikovsky saw it because in Tchaikovsky way it was a little bit some kind of joke for example he's, uh, uh, he's writing the waltz for the Tatiana's ballo and the beat is uh, on this you know in the second beat not on the first like should be in the waltz he is showing that this society this village fashion society they even can't dance the waltz right so it's written in music he's showing this kind of society which are which are thinking that they are really noble and high society uh, people but they are not they even can't dance the waltz or something and uh, in, in in our production it's 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 really more uh, in the, maybe in the three sisters of chekhov way it's more the middle of nowhere with the four ladies who wants to break through uh, the the Filipivna, who her life is quite over and everything in the past, and uh, Larina, who is o also living now only in her memories about this beautiful capital Bellows and everything, and now she's sitting. So we did in by our story, which is near the truth. Uh, they moved after the death of Olga's and Tatiana's father, the Larina's husband. They lost all the real estate and some uh, and all all the things in the depth of uh, dead husband. And the only place they can move is the this village house of Filipivna, who is their far relatives, like cous cousin, auntie, or something, mm. whatever. And. Uh, yeah, so they are living in the house of Filipivna, which were very important for me because there's a lot of funny things in the relations of these four ladies, which you can't see from the very first moment, but when you recognize it, you notice it, it gives a lot of, um, um, uh, a lot of interesting uh, colors to, to the characters. Because, for example, Filipivna, who is actually should be the servant, always musically interrupting Larina, who should be her mistress, and she always stopping her, like, like, like this, uh, like she's, she's more, uh, more powerful lady in the house uh, than Larina. Or, for example, Filipievna in this opera never talks to Olga, but as a babysitter, she should mostly be with the youngest daughter, who is Olga, but she never talks to her, she don't like her, she, she don't feel her, she talks. Larina talks to Olga, always, and Filipina talks only to Tatiana. Mm. So it's really some kind of Bernarda Alba yeah. <laughs> house yeah. there, there are very, which is very important. Yes, and you have several strong women on stage, I think. And I think it's, it, it's a bit uh, different, your, your interpretation, than, than you, 
the usual interpretation, perhaps, because uh, the villagers, they are quite cruel and, and aggressive. And also, um, Anjegin, you, 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 you start sympathizing more with him than you, perhaps usual, what you usually do. Because, um, because he's a victim of himself. Yes, <laughs> because the, the, perhaps the usual way of seeing it is that Tatiana is the victim and Anjegin is this arrogant, uh, snobbish man. But perhaps you, you get new glasses on when you see your interpretation. So that's interesting. No, I, I, re I really, uh, I, I can't say that I like the character of Anjegin. Because, but no, I, 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 I think I feel pity to him. Yeah. Because finally he's the only person who's out of any system, out of place. Uh, because Tatiana, after you know, some, some circumstances and some challenges, but she is in the right place. She, she by my version, and I'm quite sure she's happy with Gremin. It's, it is absolutely a happy, successful family, and, and everybody is okay, but not uh, Anjegin. No. And about the villages, which is very funny fact too, why I'm, 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 always, I'm, I'm showing from the very beginning that uh, their uh, very scenic and aggressive way of behaving with Larina's family, because when they're coming to her and Larina asks them to, it's always, it also came from, from Tchaikovsky, but, like I think, because he, he chose, uh, when Larina asked them to sing some funny dancing song, from the whole uh, huge and endless repertoire of Russian folk songs, they choosing the wedding song in the house with the two girls without, you know, in the edge of wedding, but, mm. without, but without. still without... Yeah. Quite cruel. Uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> they are in the age of brides, but they don't have a partners. And when they, they, it's some kind of, you know, this evil joke uh, from the village society to the family of Ladina that they are singing, especially the Russian wedding song yeah. to, to them yeah. when she asks something funny. Yeah, <laughs> T talking about uh, the songs, uh, Karl Magnus, and also singing in Russian. How is, how is it? Uh, to sing in Russian. It's um, <clears throat> it's very beautiful language, first of all, and it's extremely difficult because um, it's it can so easily be very wrong. <laughs> you don't even know when it's totally wrong. <laughs> and and um, but it's very very nice language to to uh, sing in. I mean. Also, technically, it's, it's a very nice, nice language, but it's very difficult, yes. Yeah, yeah. You, but you I should say that, uh, sorry, if, because it's an opposite to the Swedish and some European language, because yeah. the Russian singing, when you sing in Russian, it's walls. Yeah. And the, and the Swedish, it's in the manner of singing, and the technique yeah, yeah. is an opposite yeah. to the consensus. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have lots of This is the... Um, like, for example, Wagner, it's also more in the concert, but not in walls. Mm. And the Russian is in walls, so it's quite, I think, challenging. Yeah. For yeah. But I can tell you, Kormaris, that I spoke with your language coach, because we have a language coach, yeah. of course, who have, and, and she said that you were all very good. Yeah, but what should she <laughs> say? <laughs> 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 oh, they are so bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think we, we have worked very hard. We have all really tried our very best. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's even if you don't know by if it's, 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 if it's okay or not, we all want, want it to be so close as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so would you have preferred to sing it in Swedish? No. No. Me? <laughs> Me, yes. No. Why not? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think it's like with some... some no, I, I mean, I'm sure it, it's fine also, but it also gives this color of the culture and the, and the language gives the... I mean, he has written it so very precise, Tchaikovsky, of this. So, I mean, every word is, is, is really written musically. And sometimes when you do a translation, the, the important word can come very wrong in the music. So it's, it's uh, very good. Mm. 
I, I must tell this story because when I saw Eshen Anjegen the first time, it was in this house in the 1980s, and it was uh, Birgitta Svendien, the, the manager, who sang the role, role of Olga. But at that performance, yes, hey, welcome. Here is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roger, yeah, sorry. Hey. Yeah. At that performance, uh, Nikola Jeda was singing the role of Lensky, and it was a Norwegian baritone who sang the role of Angegin. And everyone sang in Swedish, Nikola Jeda sang in Russian, and the baritone sang in Norwegian. <laughs> so it was a very surrealistic way of... of uh, then the story is very clear why they're not all... <laughs> why they don't together. understand each yes, other. Tatiana, exactly. Negin, Lensky. Exactly. <laughs> It's actually so, good for the dramaturgy. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, welcome, Evan. <laughs> Thanks Roger, so much. Sir. Yeah, yeah, nice to see you here. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah we, you have actually been here before because you have conducted Lohengrin a couple Absolutely. of years ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have very special memories. Yeah, and, yeah, and you have had a, a great season because you you made uh, your debut at the Metropolitan Opera uh, ah. conducting the Magic Flute. Yes. And uh, what else have you done? Uh, Salome in that Deutsche Oper yeah. recently. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we're very happy to have you here. Thanks yeah. so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so, uh, it, it will be, of course, uh, the most natural question to ask you is about the music. Mm -hmm. Because we haven't spoken so much about the music. We have spoken more about the drama. So, uh, what, what could you say about Tchaikovsky's music in this uh, opera? Uh, would you say he is a good music dramatist? Oh, absolutely. I think um, as a dramatist, what's really interesting is that originally Tchaikovsky didn't even want to call this an opera. He said it was scenes with music. And I think um, what's really important to know is that for um, the Russian public, which knows the Pushkin so innately, it was very easy for Tchaikovsky then almost in a film way, like modern day film, to cut between scenes so that time passes because everyone knows what happens in between these scenes and so he selected the most compelling ones. Um, musically, I think what makes it so compelling, what was um, going on in his life at that moment was uh, his one and only and super short marriage of two weeks. Uh, which didn't go so well. And I was reading actually last night that uh, just at the time that the idea of setting Onegin to music had been proposed to him was exactly at the same time that he was receiving these letters um, from a woman who was a fan of his saying, I would like to be your wife, and if you don't agree to be my husband, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> it was pretty... Uh, um, insistent way of uh, getting to know each other. And, <laughs> and he said that as he was receiving these letters, it first came into his mind what the music would be for the letter scene. And he wrote the, this music first, in fact. He, he composed the letter scene, which in a way is the most unbelievable in, uh, moment in the opera. So that was the germ of it all, and it was in his real life. Mm. And I think you sense this in the music more than not just other Tchaikovsky operas, but more than uh, most operas of any composer, how immediate the feelings are, how true they are. There's something um, very real in this. Uh, also because it's not such a... Not that much happens in the story. Would you, I think we've talked about this in a, in a way. It's a very human, real experience. You can a, a lot of things happens between the scenes that you never see, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but what happens between people is completely believable. So he, uh, he grasped this partly because it came from his own life and partly because I, I think the great composers are always tuned in to humanity in a way that many of us aren't. And, and so there's just an immediate feeling. Plus then all the spectacle, the dance, and the... Um, yeah, it's glorious. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he, he knew that he both had to describe the intimate scenes and then also put some good entertainment in the piece yeah, for yeah. the audience to sort of enjoy the whole opera. Yeah. Um, uh, Karl Magnus, Talking about the music, would you agree that you know that he expresses all the, the emotions in the music, Tchaikovsky? 
Yes, it's a, it's a, <clears throat> it's a way of everyone has its own character of melodic. So it's like, and and how I mean, for instance, my aria, which is very, very nasty way of saying no to someone that we can be friends and I I can be like your brother and when she has written this letter to him and it's a, the the music falls in a very in a very I don't know it's hard to explain but in a very you can say it is. kindly way but but it, it's not at all kind <laughs> but it sounds so the, all, all the music is very direct in Britain so, so it's very special music, yeah. I think, Tchaikovsky. Is it good vocal music for everyone? Yes, yeah. it's very good written it, bu- yeah, you, vocally, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But what about the orchestra, Evan, and the different instruments? Can you say something about how he uses the yeah. different... Uh, I think it's a, really um, a miracle of orchestration, because if you look at the forces, um, the 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 amount of players and the instruments that are used, It's precisely, uh, except for two extra horns and occasionally the use of the trombones, it's a Mozart orchestra. And uh, so he uses a classical period. We've been talking about this a lot in rehearsal, that there are many times that we can (coughs) aspire to use the texture of Mozart and Haydn. Uh, And then he creates these huge moments. So he's able to go from these very intimate chamber music textures, which are just using Mozart's uh, forces, to really big moments. And, and that's a m- miracle in itself that a composer could create such a wide palette with such a limited orchestra, in fact. Yeah. It's at the same time in 78, right, that, that Wagner had already written the entire ring. And Tchaikovsky, by the way, had been to Bayreuth and saw the original ring production, which very much influenced him, not, not so much in this opera, but there are what we would call themes that you could say, oh, he was possibly a little bit influenced by the light motif of Wagner. Um, But he was very aware of the entire dialogue of European music. So why I call it a miracle is that he then chose to use the strictest of the smallest, most economical forces. And in fact, the premiere of this was also only at the Moscow Conservatory, right? Yeah, yeah, so it we, wasn't at the Bolshoi or it wasn't at the um, Marinsky Theater. It was in with students. Uh, so there was that also said something very much that he believed in the power of small forces and true storytelling to be able to accomplish what otherwise was grand opera going on. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, just to remember that. In Dima Bertman is his, in his cabinet in the Moscow. Had the original photo of uh, Stanislavski uh, production, it, it, which is very interesting. That they are all in the costumes of Stanislavski time. Mm-hmm. There's no Pushkin dresses, nothing. So it was already performed in uh, in the modern in the modern costumes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it never was the this cliche about the dresses and the, the ballot dresses and the Pushkin. So the, the first main production of Stanislavski and this general was in the modern costumes. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, we, we talk a lot uh, in the sort of the <coughs> opera world about uh, how to find stories, good stories to tell from the opera stage. And I think um, you have already sort of uh, answered that question because uh, is this is this a story that is still relevant? Can it tell us something today? And I mean, it is because it is all about human human beings. And and as you say, uh, it was even in the in the very beginning uh, staged in in modern clothes. So um, I think that's that's uh, that's one of the reasons why it's still so much played. So uh, time moves fast when you talk. So. Uh, um, Evan, are there any tricky passages in this opera from from your point of view as conductor, or or, or for the list, for the just for me? Yeah, or for the, <laughs> yes, yes for you. <laughs> well, professionally, I would tell you none. <laughs> no, but I mean, in this production, no, of course, perhaps, yeah. uh, of course, the the. 
It requires a virtuosic. I think the, the biggest cha the big, biggest challenge is to create this chamber music quality that I was talking about, because you can only create these beautiful, intimate moments if you're willing to play so softly to create so much texture and um, availability for the singers to be making music in the moment. So that's always, I find the challenge in this piece, uh, because the bigger moments speak for themselves. Um, but uh, I hope you're all coming. Vasily has a gorgeous production, and, and Karl Magnus is tremendous. <laughs> so uh, I, w I really hope to, to see you there. It, it, it's going to be something special. Yeah. Uh, yes. Karl Magnus, do you have a favorite passage? Something that you like very much, musically, or, or so? Yes, uh, it's, it's in the second act, it's E minor. Uh, when I'm talking to uh, uh, Lensky and I'm cheating him, it's like a waltz team. Ah, oh, yeah. And I don't. And I start on the second beat. I don't start on the first beat. So it's again with this theme that is is a little bit crooked. Everything. It's not like one, two, three. It's like mm, one, two, th or mm, two, three, one. Okay. It's like it's a very special place. So we will listen. <coughs> Intensely, then. Yes. yes. Yeah. Will you do uh, uh, another Eugenia Jagin production in in the future? Oh. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. I, I should say that I, I I I started this path six years ago in uh, Vilnius. It was the first. It was the same idea. Yeah. So I am um, as a stage director. There's a different point of views, but personally, me, I think that I can stage every score only one way otherwise i was not honest some somewhere so as a as a as, as a person to be you know honest and in timus waves and ways and and everything i could stage on uh, eugene anegin only with this 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 idea in that uh Direction and I started this path six years ago in Vilnius. Then there was another two versions of the same, and then I developed the set design and some because every time, even now, you every time you open the the score, you see a lot of new things that you haven't seen before, and uh, the uh, it's 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 always great to work with Tchaikovsky because when you don't. If you don't know what's happened with the character, you just need to look to the to the full score more precisely, and then you will you will get uh, an answer. Yeah. So I don't know if yeah. if, but I'm quite happy with this last yeah. edition. <laughs> yes, and, yes. Uh, with the with, you, with you... the actors, with casting, with music, uh, directing, with everything. So I'm 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 really happy, and I think uh, mm. and yeah, we can wait a couple of years. Until we'll you see. do your next, <laughs> next, yes. I think uh, uh, the proof for being a, a good piece of art is that you can make many interpretations of it, isn't it? Because yes, that's yes. Some, that tells us that it's really good. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for coming here and talking, mm -hmm. and, and thank you all so much. And uh, come to the performance. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.